So a customer reaches out and he says his computer is not working. Well, typically when a customer reaches out, it's because their computer's not working. But anyways, this is his son's computer. He said that um, his son went to turn it on. It's not booting into Windows. When it does eventually boot into Windows, which sometimes it does, it doesn't, he goes to load his games. He keeps getting errors. He didn't remember the errors and he didn't take pictures this time. Usually I like when my customers take pictures, but um, he didn't take any pictures for me. So that's unfortunate. I went over to his house because he's actually a good buddy of mine and um, I tried to diagnose, diagnose it on the scene to see if I could fix it there. Usually, you know, if it's something software related, um, we're able to just wipe it clean or do something to that effect. I tried to boot into Windows. I could not get it to boot into Windows. I waited 20 minutes at one point. It wasn't doing anything. So I kind of gave up on that. Popped in my USB thumb drive and then while popping that in, trying to see if it would um, install a fresh copy of Windows. It would get into the screen before they asked for the user agreement or whatever crap that is and well it would just freeze there i'm not 100 percent sure what is going on with this thing i told him hey let me take it back to the house let me dive into it got more tools more things to test because if it is hardware related then we're going to need hardware to kind of swap it out might be something software related i don't know I don't think it's software related. Um, I wasn't able to get into the BIOS because he had this weird keyboard and I could not figure out how to get the DEL button to work. So I was very limited on what I can do. But now that I'm back at the garage, I have a keyboard that has a DEL button that works so we could get into the BIOS. Now that we're in the garage, let's dive into it. But first, let's just take a look and see what we got. So as you can see, we have a 011 knockoff. I don't think this is a legit 011. Just probably one of the cheaper models that you get on the eBay and Amazon for like dirt cheap. So let's open it up. Okay, yeah. That opens up easy. Let's get this glass out. Let's see if we can get this backside panel off. Yep, simple. So now let's take a look at the components inside. Now this does look like a pre-built i'm not 100 percent. i don't think it's a pre-built i think this is one of those frankenstein pcs we have this graphics card um with this bracket that's just kind of i don't know what the purpose of this is this might have came from a pre-built this graphics card um this logo looks like uh asus not asus this logo looks like an acer so it might be like a 1650 which if that's the case that's not terrible we got a 256 Western Digital M.2. Okay, approved. We have the Mitsubishi Evo Sniper Geo Memory. Might be the 16 gig flavor, that works. The motherboard is at MSI A320M Pro M2 V2. Okay. In the back we have DVI, DisplayPort, and HDMI. Judging by this, this might be maybe a 10 series card. I can't remember if the 16 series had one of these. We're missing the back plate, so that tells me I possibly built this computer years ago. Approved. I didn't build it. Over here, we have a mechanical drive, B gears, by gears, B gears, fans. Okay, never heard of them. And as far as our power supply, I don't know what flavor it is, but considering that it's non modular and has, well, Molex, yeah, huh, all right, so where do we begin? Let's fire it up. Let me see if I can get into the BIOS, take a look at the temperatures, because if this thing's running hot off the back, that would be a reason why it's giving me all those issues, so let's start there. Everything's plugged in, and I can't find my little USB thing for my keyboard, which, which probably means that I may have left it in a computer that I recently sold, which sucks, because I do that at least two to three times a year. Unfortunate. Probably need to invest in stock in Logitech since I keep having to buy those. But anyways, let's fire it up. Use my old keyboard. Hit the DEL button. Delete. 1,462 times because, well, anything less, it might not work. Just kidding. Probably helps if I give this thing some video. Now, I'm already hearing something which might be the cause of what's going on. I don't know if you can hear it. Okay. 
Not sure how well that came on the camera, but the hard drive keeps turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off. So that hard drive could be toast. Now I'm not getting a screen, which I did have one earlier. Sometimes you gotta turn the monitor on and off. Hmm, nothing. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do first is unplug the hard drive and see if that solves our issue. Could be as simple as that. Now I've seen that a bunch of times where the computer starts crashing and doing weird things and... All right, let's come over here. This hard drive is just dancing. Okay, that's great. Uh, let's unplug you. All right, flick this thing back on. And let's see what she does or does not do. All right, so we got a screen. Let's hit the DEL button. We are in the BIOS. The date looks good. 256 gig for the M.2. Uh, do, 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 do. let's see. I'm trying to find the temperatures in the BIOS and I'm not seeing it. Hardware monitor. All right, CPU temperature 24 degrees Celsius. The span, the fan is spinning, so that's good. All right, so let's go ahead, save and exit. Let's see if this thing will now boot into Windows. All right, so I'm plugging that. It posted, it's booting into Windows, no problem. Just waiting for him to send me his uh, password so I can log in and double check everything. But I think the issue that we're gonna run into is that uh, one terabyte has all his games on it. So I'll have to offer him the option of either upgrading the M.2 to a one terabyte, which would be a lot simpler or easier, or seeing if he wants to go with another mechanical drive. So I'm waiting for him to text me back and I'll let you know what he decides. So it's actually an hour later and the customer agreed to the repair. So I informed him that the mechanical drive is bad and that we need to change it out. Gave him two options. One, to get a one terabyte NVMe, just run everything on this. It would be a lot faster, better gaming experience. And then of course I gave him the other option to go with a mechanical drive. $20 being for the mechanical drive, uh, 80 to 100. I forget what the price I had uh, got on the internet was for a one terabyte NVMe. He went with the cheaper route. Hey, if that's what they want to do, that's what they want to do. So you got to do what the customer wants to do. What I am going to do as a bonus, I am going to go ahead and just kind of clean this thing up. It is pretty dusty. Just get it clean, probably clean up some of the wires on that. Just do a little bit of that just to kind of make this thing look better. I do take pride in my work. And yes, I don't charge extra for that, but that's something that I always do with any computer that comes in. I just clean it up. Um, as far as these fans, I'm not sure how the airflow works on this case. If I'm being honest with you folks, um, this is blowing air out. The top ones are blowing air out. So you got hot air that's coming out and then only... And then only fresh air coming in from the back. It works, the computer has no overheating or thermal throttling issues. So I'm just gonna leave that as B. I'm not sure who built it or what they did, but um, if it works, it works. Now. One thing I do recommend before you go ahead and call your customer and tell them exactly what's wrong, test everything. Cause I mean, nothing is more, I guess it looks more bad on you that you quote them for one thing and then you find more problems. Cause then it brings the question, did you test everything? Off camera, I was able to get his um, password. I went in, I stress tested the graphics card, stress tested the CPU. Temperatures were fine, even with it being closed, this thing ran solid. So I know the computer is good and that's the only issue we have. So let's dive in, let's clean this up, give this computer a nice, fresh, clean, look on life, get this drive in, and then send it on its way. So now the first thing I need to do is figure out how to take this thing off because I've never messed with this case. Let's use my lazy man screwdriver, the Craftsman. Now, like I showed earlier in the video, um, yeah, this is how they installed it. This could be why this thing went bad, because as you can see, it's probably bouncing around. Who knows if they've knocked this computer over. I've seen that happen. Um, 
secure your drives. So I think what I'm gonna do is just take this out. And these screws are definitely way too long. And what do we have? A one terabyte Barracuda. Shame, pretty good drive. And now we're gonna pop in this one, but we gotta see how we're gonna be able to secure it, which these mechanical drives have screws on the back, so. Yep, just like so. All right, that should be nice and secure. So this is a one terabyte Western Digital Blue. Um, I have a bunch of these lying around. I actually had picked up a deal a couple of years ago of some new old stock. These were brand new sealed. I got 10 of them for probably like 40 bucks and I've already sold six of them within the past year. I think it's about a year ago I got it. So definitely got my money's worth. Now for this computer, let's go ahead and dust this off. Just gonna use the brush just to break off all the dust. And then we'll come in with the blower and, you know, fix this right. I am gonna just take off this power supply because I wonder what kind of power supply it is. I know they say, Curiosity killed the cat, but you know what? I'm just curious. And we have a, a PDF 550 watt Captain Power. These are the specs on it. It's not a terrible power supply. Um, I've actually sold a bunch of computers with these power supplies, but typically I get the ones that are 80 bronze and all that type of stuff, so yeah but if it works it works all right so now what i am going to do just as a bonus is i'm going to take off this heat sink now thermal paste not terrible but we can make that a lot better now this is a ryzen 3 2200g i mean it gets the job done right now let's give this fans a little more dusting break all this loose and that way when we take out the air duster it's a lot easier to get everything out all right let's blow it off All right, much better. So I'm gonna go ahead, put thermal paste, put this thing back together, install the first copy of Windows, and we should be good. So I had to turn on the camera for this one because um, I noticed this little problem. Let me kind of take this apart. If you look at the graphics card, I thought it was a single slot. It's actually a, a dual slot. And the way it was positioned, this was blocking it off. So in a nutshell, we're choking the graphics card. So I'm taking it apart and I'm gonna remove this bracket because I don't see the purpose of this bracket for this case. But we'll go over here and we'll see if I can do it one-handed, maybe. Twist this back and forth. Now that's nice and open. And with that being open, we're gonna have more airflow. More airflow, better temperatures, better performance. Not sure what this graphics card is. I should have checked the specs when I was uh, bench testing it. Actually forgot, but um, yeah. I thought that was pretty interesting, but I wanted to share that. In those situations, and comment down below, when you're fixing somebody's computer and you see a mistake like that, do you fix it, do you ignore it, or do you tell the customer and charge them for it? Let me know your opinions. All right, folks, so we're done. It's up, it's running. No more issues and something as simple as following your ears. I know the toucan sand says follow your nose, but in this case, it was something obvious. Just hearing this thing power up and power on, that caused all our issues. Now, I did do a fresh copy of Windows 11, primarily because the customer requested that. He wanted this thing wiped out clean, so that's what they want. That's what we do. Overall, pretty easy repair. Like I said, I would have rather gone with a one terabyte NVMe, but they went with the cheaper route. You do what you got to do. 
As far as the specs, it is a Ryzen 3 2200G, does have 16 gigs of DDR4, and the graphics card is a 1660 Super. Not terrible. Um, obviously, a faster CPU would be better, but that might be something I might suggest for him if he's ever interested in it. I believe it's his son's gaming computer, so I mean, I guess if he gets straight A's, he might get a faster CPU or something like that. I don't know, but I'm here to help them, whatever they need. So with that being said, I'm glad that this is done. Um, it was a little noisy in his house when I was working on it, and I think that's why I wasn't able to hear the drive. And even then, if I would have heard the drive at his house, um, there would have not been anything I can do because I don't have any drives. I don't carry these drives with me. Just something I keep in stock over here. But pretty simple advice I always give anytime you're doing this type of repair or any type of uh, computer repair, check all the hardware, do stress testing, thermals, all that stuff. Make sure that everything works before you call them and tell them, hey, this is the problem I found. Yes, go after the problem you found, but check everything because, I mean, it totally stink if I fix this issue and then the graphics card is fried or it has bad memory, the CPU is overheating or, you know, something else might be bad. You know, if I'm going to give them the bad news, I'm going to give it to them all at once. And in case you're wondering about the fan over here, I did speak to the customer. He's aware of that. He's perfectly fine with that. I think it's part of this integrated system that they use. Uh, I don't know. Maybe uses a remote. I'd have to check with him on that. But hey. Uh, I guess that's what happened when you use cheap fans. I think this is one of those Lee. Well, it is one of those Lee and Lee knockoffs. I just don't know what company makes it. But anyways, comment down below. Let me know your thoughts, concerns, criticisms. When you're working on a computer, do you just fix the problem that you're focused on or pay the fix? Or do you stress test everything and then just give them a breakdown of exactly what else is wrong with it? If there is something else, or is it just one of those things that, Hey, I fixed the problem. Anything else is not my problem. Definitely. Let me know your comments on that. And in a situation like this where we found extra issues like that, do you inform the customer? Do you charge them for that? Or is that something that you look out for them and maybe give them a freebie? If you like this video, definitely hit the like button, subscribe if you're not, and as always, we'll see what we come up with next.